Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We are um, we have passed Epiphany, and we are uh, or we're in the the time after Epiphany season. So things just feel like they're going quickly. Some of the um, some of the nave space you can see has been has been degreened a bit already. We had some slightly dried out reeds and some poinsettias and things that were ready to move on. And, uh, and then other things have moved on, but we still have our Chris tree up. And if you would like to help us kind of conclude our degreening today, um, you're welcome to stay after worship. There's a crew that has told me they would stay and help do that. We'll get all the Chris down and we'll move the tree out. And then we will be saying it was a wonderful Christmas season and we look forward to next year. Um, couple other announcements for you. Paul, Pastor Paul, is still in the Holy Land. They're doing great. Um, I'm not, some of you, I think, have seen pictures on Facebook. I finally transferred them to our um, Facebook page for the church correctly yesterday. Uh, so you can see some of that there and follow his journey. They are gone for several more days yet. So uh, we're holding down the fort here and hanging in. Um, also, though, uh, Wendy, our parish administrator, ended up having to have a second eye surgery. And so please hold her in your prayers as she recovers from that one. Um, she will not be back this week either, so she, gets, she sees the doctor later this week to find out when she can come back. So I say all of that to say please pray for Wendy and please have patience with me as I've kind of got all of that now. <laughs> um, but I do have Nina's coming to help me tomorrow from 10 to 12, Monday through Thursday. That's when we'll hold designated office hours. So if somebody, if there's a time you need to just be able to drop in, come by and ask about something, 10 to 12, Monday through Thursday this week, either Nina or I will be there um, to help you with things. If you need something outside of those hours, I will likely still be here, but I don't want to, I don't want to promise you too many hours that I'm sitting in the office because you never know what can come up, right? So, um, but please reach out to me. Um, if you have my phone number, you can do that. If you've got my email, you can do that, and I'm happy to, to work with you on what you might need. I'm trying to think of other announcements. Oh, Wayne Giese has uh, offered to preach for us today, which turned out to be a beautifully helpful thing for me this week, and I'm so grateful that he is here for that. Um, next week after Paul is back, I will actually be preaching to give him a little bit of time to readjust. So you'll have a couple, a couple more weeks with different people up here preaching for you, um, but we give thanks today that, that Wayne is with us to share the word, so we are grateful for that. I think those are all of the announcements. If I've missed something, we just need to hold a lot of space with grace right now. So <laughs> I appreciate that from you. And as we join together um, with the music of the prelude as we prepare for worship.
please stand as you're able and face the baptismal font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another. For the glory of your holy name, amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth.
Let us pray. O God, our Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your daughters and sons, and empower us all with your Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. for you. Do you guys know what God created? Everything? What? People. People and love. That's right. And how did God feel about all the things that he created? He felt happy? Did he love? He did say this is good. That's exactly right. And he loved them dearly. All of the things. Do you think that he looked around and said, Mr. Elephant, you are much better and I love you much more than Mr. Fish over here. I only like him okay. No, he loved them all equally and he loved them very deeply, didn't he? God calls all of his creatures by name no matter what, whether they're a big old elephant or a tiny seahorse or you guys. And he loves them deeply. And with that love, we're baptized. And we just have the baptismal font back there with the water. And when we're baptized with that love, we have a special superpower that God gives us, which is that we can go and spread his love with all of creation, to all of his creatures that he also loves. When he makes the sign of the cross on our foreheads, he says, here you go. Here is my love. Give it to all of the people within all of our creation and all of the creatures, and it will never, ever run out. So... For you guys today, I have these little paper hearts that you can give out to all of the creatures and anybody who you think you love, or you can keep it and as a reminder that God loves you very much. On the back of this, it has a music note. It does, because sometimes we feel God's love through music. Do you think that's a sign that you need to keep it closer? It is quite possible. <laughs> And if you guys want to pray with me, dear God, help us to know that you love us so much. Guide us as we spread your love to all creation. Thank you for calling us yours and helping us to remember that your love knows no limits. Amen. first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 42. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him and he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up, lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, 
and from, pri- from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from Acts chapter 10. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, 
but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. It doesn't matter who I am. What matters is whose I am and whose is yours. Lord, I love this place. Calvary, the people come together here to worship our Lord and Savior. Yet, I know this building is just a structure that has a rich history of its beginnings in Morganton and Burke County. A rich history of saints who have gone on before us. A membership of believers in Jesus Christ, present here today by your physical presence here, and some joining us by the technology afforded to them. Lord, I love you folks, and I hope for you, I look to you for encouragement and hope. What in the world? January 5th was the 12th and final day of Christmas. On January 6th, the Christian calendar turned to a new season, Epiphany. The origins of Epiphany as a church festival are somewhat vague, as is the very definition of the word, Epiphany. It can mean manifestation, revelation, appearance, insight, enlightenment, or a shining forth. Epip Epiphany begins with the story of the Magi, the astrologers, who followed a brilliant star to the place of Jesus' birth and honored the child with gifts. And upon seeing the baby, they were it says, overwhelmed with joy and fell on their knees to worship him. Uh, these verses from Isaiah traditionally read at, read at Epiphany, underscore this. It says, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And here is a poem that captures the theme a little bit. To discover how to be truthful now, to discover how to be living now, to discover how to be loving now, to discover how to be human now, is the reason we follow this star. Today is celebrated as the baptism of Jesus. The gospel reading is taken from Matthew, the third chapter. So please stand for the reading. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John, John the Baptist, at the Jordan, and he went there to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up out of the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Please be seated.
what in the world? So here we have people gathered at the Jordan River. Uh, I'm thinking Pastor Paul was just there the other day. Yeah. And we have disciples or followers of John the Baptist who have heeded John's call to repentance. At least we assume there are or have been baptized, many of them. But then we kind of know many of whom are still kind of on the shores contemplating John's call and what that, what to make of it. Hey, they're human like us. We too, in all honesty, have come to points in our own lives where we have kind of come to a fork in the road and we have to make a decision. What in the world? Continuing this story, along comes Jesus the rabbi along with those who have been following him and learning from him through his words and actions. It is a crossroads of sorts. Two leaders separated in physical birth by less than a year. They are standing by the Jordan River. Their eyes latch onto each other. They are, after all, related to each other. Remember, the pregnant Mary visits her cousin Elizabeth, and as she does so, Elizabeth says, the baby, John, leaps in her womb. Now, here at the Jordan River, something is in, occurring in a very different dimension, and the people are quiet and observing, I'm sure. Remember, Jesus is intentionally coming to the Jordan River. He is on a mission to follow the will of his Father in heaven. There is a task at hand that needs to be completed as God ordained. What in the world? In Christian baptism, we too are born into a new life, a new awakening to the God of the universe. We recognize the need to walk wet daily in our lives in a world filled with much darkness and gloom. We recognize that God is working in our lives and a transformation is taking place. A transformation that shines light and hope into the world. Like the dove ascending and lighting on Jesus, we are dependent on a daily inspiration provided by the Holy Spirit. Our faith has us calling out to the triune God of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to do a good work in us so that we, are respond, that we respond appropriately to the needs evident around us, to love our neighbor, to seek justice and truth. What in the world? We are not immune to the world around us. We cry out for fairness, good government, and strong leadership, leadership that is challenging our governance right now in the United States of America. People of God, we need to be praying for our country. Current Pew research states that since 2007, the share of Christians in the general population has dropped from 78% to a present level of 63%. But Christians make up 88% of the voting members of the new 118th Congress that are being sworn in. Mind you, that encompasses a wide range of Christian denominations. I know there's a little different, but I invite you right now to just quietly bow your head and in your own heart, just lift our leaders up, please.
Thank you. What in the world? Like the people at the Jordan, we too must respond to God's voice in awe and gratitude, giving Jesus the worship worthy of his divine status. Like the wise men, the astrologers, kneeling before the baby Jesus, worshiping him and bringing their gifts, we should respond as well by offering our gifts and talents and faith stories. Stories that draw others to our triune God. Each of us have been given life stories that glorify our Lord. Folks, it is all right to confess that many things are a mystery to us. We understand that some of the toughest questions we have, we are still wrestling with. We confess that we are still in the process of learning to trust God in areas that remain somewhat mysterious to us. We can honestly share that with others in developing a more trusting relationship. Think often about the baptism of Jesus at the river. Remember your baptism on a daily basis and walk wet as you go about your day. What in the world? Yes, the bottom line is we have the answer. Amen. the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Calling God, you speak with power to your church. Open our hearts and minds to the new things you are declaring. Strengthen bishops, pastors, deacons, lay leaders, and teachers of the faith. Equip the baptized for your re reconciling and redeeming work. 
Merciful God, Jesus, our prayer. you provide the waters of the earth, and in Jesus' baptism, you reveal the waters of life. Cleanse and protect oceans, rivers, and watersheds. Bring relief to parched lands and to com communities without access to safe water. Merciful God, Jesus, our prayer. you never weary of establishing justice increase cooperation and constructive dialogue between nations, guide local, national, and international authorities to govern with equity, vision, and integrity. We pray for those in military service, for peacemakers, and for our enemies. Merciful God. Your mercy is steadfast. Give sanctuary to people who flee from oppression, war, poverty, and famine. Sustain health care workers, caregivers, first responders, counselors, and all who help and heal. Comfort those who are grieving or experiencing crisis. We pray especially for those we name now, out loud, or in our hearts. Merciful God. In Christ, you gather the beloved community, kindle the gifts of your spirit in your people, accompany the newly baptized, those recently ordained, and any beginning a new ministry, inspire synodical leaders and congregational councils to serve with imagination and wisdom. Merciful God. Your faithfulness endures throughout, throughout all generations. We give thanks for those who have died in Christ trusting that we will be united with them and all the saints in Christ's resurrection life. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
please stand as you're able. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings and thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. church on earth and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. Thanks be to God.
please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. We thank you for the healing that springs from abundantly, forth abundantly from his table. Renew our strength to, to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. May our God, who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen. 